Hi guys, welcome to this revision summary video looking at everything that you need to know on acids, bases and indicators. The first section of this video is going to have a look at what the difference between an acid and an alkali is and what makes something acidic and alkali. So the three main acids you need to know are HCl, which is hydrochloric acid, H2SO4, which is sulfuric acid, and HNO3, which is nitric acid. Now you'll notice the key thing about all three of these is that they've all got hydrogen in. And indeed, it's that hydrogen ion, H plus ion, that makes something acidic. If we have a look at some alkalis, such as sodium hydroxide, which is NaOH, magnesium hydroxide, which is MgOH2, and aluminium hydroxide, which is AlOH3, again, you'll notice all three of these have something in common. They've all got OH, and it's the OH minus ion that makes something alkali. You're also expected to know the pH of different acids and alkalis. So if I draw my pH scale here, you should remember that everything with a pH of less than 7 is acidic, and everything more than 7 is alkali, leaving pH of 7 being neutral. Now, if you have a strong acid, that is going to be around pH 1 to 2. If you have a weaker acid, it's going to be between 3 and 6, and similar with your alkalis. So pH of 8 to around 10 is weak, and 11 plus is strong. The second part of this video is going to have a look at all the different indicators and what colours they go in acids and alkalis. The first one we're going to look at is phenolphthalein. So if you take phenolphthalein and add it into an acid, that acid will stay colourless. Phenolphthalein itself is already colourless, so it stays the same. It's important not to say clear, because you can have something that's clear blue, clear red, it will be colourless. And then if you take it and put it into an alkali, it will go from colourless to pink. The second indicator we're going to have a look at is methyl orange. Now you can guess from the name, methyl orange is orange, and when we take it and we put it into an acid, it goes from orange to red. If we take that same indicator and put it into an alkali, it will go from orange to yellow. And the third and final indicator you need to know is litmus solution. Now litmus solution starts off purple. If you take that and put it into an acid, it will go red. And if you take it and you put it into an alkali, it will go from purple to blue. The next part is going to have a look at the link between pH and concentration, in particular for your H plus ions. So if we go back to our pH scale, as we go from pH 7 all the way down to pH 1, the lower the pH, the higher the concentration of H plus ions. So you know something with pH 1 is going to have more H plus ions than something with a pH of 6. It's the same with your alkalis, as you go from 7 all the way up to 13, the higher the pH, the higher the concentration of your OH minus ions. It's also important to remember at pH 7, there are no H plus ions, there are no OH minus ions, it is just water, H2O. Now what they will ask you in the exam is, as the pH goes down by one, what happens to the concentration of H plus ions? And the key thing is, every time the pH decreases by one, it becomes 10 times more concentrated. There are 10 times more H plus ions. If it goes down by 2, it's 10 times 10 more H plus ions, which comes out to 100 times more concentrated or 100 times more H plus ions. And that process continues. So for example, if we go from pH 6 to pH 2, so it's gone down by 4, you've got 4 lots of 10, so 10 times 10 times 10 times 10, which comes out to 10,000 times more concentrated or 10,000 times more H plus ions. Now the way you'll see that in a question could be something like, how much more concentrated is acid rain, which has a pH of 2, compared to normal rainwater, which has a pH of 6? So all you do is you find out the difference in the pH, so what's it gone down by? 4, so that's 10 times 10 times 10 times 10. Put that into your calculator, it comes out to 10,000. So it's 10,000 times more concentrated. It works the other way as well. So if you had a question that says how much less concentrated is ethanoic acid, pH 5, compared to nitric acid, pH 2, you go from pH 2 all the way up to pH 5. It's gone up by 3, so that's 10 times 10 times 10. So it's 1,000 times less concentrated. The next section of this video is going to have a look at the four terms dilute, concentrated, weak and strong. What you need to be able to do is take those terms, 
explain them and explain how we can make two different acids react the same way. So if we start off with the term dilute, if we have a dilute acid, it means there aren't that many H plus ions in our solution. There are a few H plus particles. If I have a concentrated one, however, I have a lot more. So I have more or lots of H plus particles. When we get onto weak and strong acids, if we start off with weak, for example, ethanoic acid, which has got the formula CH3COOH, when that goes into solution, it will dissociate or ionize only partially. So it splits into its ions and you're gonna have very few H plus ions. When you have a strong acid, for example, hydrochloric acid, it fully ionizes. So it turns from HCl into your H plus and your Cl minus ions. So what that means is you have a lot more H plus ions in your solution. So they might give you a reaction. I've got here hydrochloric acid or ethanoic acid reacting with marble chip, and they're going to work out how much volume is produced in 30 seconds when they add the acid to the marble chip. And they'll give you some results. So for example, hydrochloric acid, our strong acid, is going to produce 20 mil of gas in 30 seconds. But our weak acid, ethanoic is going to only produce 7 mil. And then they'll turn around and give you a question saying something like, how could you alter a reaction to produce the same volume of gas? And there are two options, two ways you can do it. First option being change your weak acid. So what we do is we take that and we make it more concentrated. You can do that by evaporating off some of the water. You don't need to go into the specifics. Just say, make it more concentrated. If you do that, there are going to be more H plus ions. It's going to react faster. Therefore, it's going to produce more volume in the same amount of time. The second option is change your strong acid. And you can imagine you're going the other way. So instead of making it more concentrated, this time you're going to make it more dilute. So you take it, you dilute it down. Therefore, you're going to have less H plus ions and therefore it's going to react slower. If it reacts slower, less gas is produced in 30 seconds. This section of the video is going to have a look at the difference between bases and alkalis. Nice and simple, if it's a base, it will neutralize an acid. So a base is anything that neutralizes an acid. Your ionic equation for that is where you have a H plus ion, it reacts with an OH minus ion, and it makes H2O. So when we say neutralizes, there are no ions left. It's just water, it is neutral. An alkali, however, is anything that neutralizes an acid and is soluble. So we say a soluble base. Soluble, you should remember, means it will dissolve. Okay, the next section is going to have a look at word equations involving acids. So there are three acids you need to know, which are HCl, H2SO4, and HNO3. You also need to know the salts produced. So we have three acids, as I said, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, and nitric acid. You need to remember that if it's hydrochloric acid, you will always get a chloride at the end of your salt. If it's sulfuric acid, you will always get a sulfate at the end of your salt. And if it's nitric acid, you will always get a nitrate. So to name your salt, all you have to do is take the name of the metal, remembering that the metals are on the left-hand side of the periodic table, as you can see in the top left here, and add the correct salt ending, which we just talked about. So for example, if you have magnesium and nitric acid, Magnesium is the name of your metal, and then nitric acid, as we said down below, that makes a nitrate. So your actual product, your salt, is going to be magnesium nitrate. You also need to know the byproduct. There are three situations you need to remember. If you have an oxide, water is produced as your byproduct. If you have a carbonate, you get carbon dioxide and water. And if you have nothing, so no oxide, no carbonate, you always get hydrogen given off. So for example, lithium oxide reacting with nitric acid. First thing you do is you realize you've got an oxide. If you have an oxide, it produces water. So that is your byproduct. If it's a carbonate, as we can see down below, your byproduct is carbon dioxide and water. And if there's nothing there, if it's just lithium and nitric acid, there's no oxide, there's no carbonate, you're gonna get hydrogen given off. So let's piece it all together. So my first reaction, I've got sodium reacting with nitric acid. I've got nitric acid, that forms a nitrate. 
the name of my metal is sodium, therefore my product is sodium nitrate, and that is the name of my salt. There is nothing after the sodium, therefore I get hydrogen produced, and that is my word equation. Number two, lithium oxide and sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid makes a sulfate. My metal here is lithium, so what do I get? Lithium sulfate. This time I've got an oxide. If I've got an oxide, I'm going to get water produced. So my byproduct is water, and that's my equation complete. And finally, aluminium carbonate plus hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid, that makes a chloride. My metal is aluminium, so I have aluminium chloride. I've got a carbonate. Carbonate, remember, carbon dioxide and water. So my byproducts are carbon dioxide and water. And again, my word equation is complete. The next section is going to have a look at the test for the two gases from this topic, carbon dioxide and hydrogen. So if we start off with carbon dioxide, the first thing you need to do is take your gas and bubble it through lime water, as you can see here. If carbon dioxide is present, that lime water will go cloudy. Again, you can see that occurring in the video down below. If we move on to hydrogen, all you need with hydrogen is to take a lit splint, and if you've got hydrogen, you get a squeaky pop, as you can hear here. And that brings this revision summary video to an end. Hi guys, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please click on like down below. You can also subscribe to my channel, you can check out the latest video, and you can visit my website up above here. Bye now.